uh, the NASF has done a um, majority of its work in uh, South Asia, or specifically Pakistan, uh, because that's where our family is from, and that's where it all started, with a small donation of chairs for teachers in uh, <clears throat> my dad's old high school, which is about 100 and, I want to say, almost 30 years old. 130 years old. And uh, the teachers, um, my father and mother went, just, this was just uh, 2007, they decided to go and say, well, what can we do to help, just to make a small donation. This, our foundation was in, we had no idea that we were going to even start a family foundation or a nonprofit organization. And they said, well, our teachers don't have chairs to sit on. What they do is uh, they'll take a desk, sit on the desk and put their feet up on the benches where the children sit. And then the children have to move over and, sco and get squished with each other. So that was our very first donation, um, were chairs for teachers. Uh, next we started with uh, many free eye camps going into poor villages, or villages that were, for people are very poor, um, and doing free cataract removal surgeries. And majority of our uh, patients are, are very uh, old or elderly. And um, these are just a few pictures of after and during uh, a free medical camp after uh, the floods that hit in 2010. Uh, in this picture, the lady is taking uh, blood sugar and it says 425, which is actually quite normal to have very high blood sugar and majority of, uh, of our you know, people over there have no idea that this is even happening to their bodies. And there's a high need for, for medical assistance. Uh, this young girl's name is Sakina. She was 12 at the time. Yep. And uh, she's completely blind in both eyes. Uh, and um, that's a picture of uh, Mrs. Suzanne Hawkins, who works at Togus VA, and who was kind enough to make a wonderful donation to have one of her eyes, uh, to have a choreographed transplant so that she could be able to see. So thank you very much. And this is um, almost a whole year, at, it took about a whole year to find her and then to perform the surgeries a few months after, and, uh, or one surgery. And this is her being her checked and she could actually see afterwards and was able to recognize everyone. To see herself for the first time, to see her family for the first time, her parents. Um, and all I heard was that she could not even sit down. She wanted to run around everywhere. Um, and thank you very much, Suzanne. Wonderful contribution. Going back, I'm sorry, in the beginning I forgot to mention that our foundation has four domains. We work under health, education, humanities, and peace. Uh, that was for the health portion and this is for the education. Uh, we went back to the same high school where my father went and uh, built a, um, a library, or actually refurnished a library. They had a library but it really wasn't a library. Um, and these are just a couple pictures from that with new shelves and, and books installed. Uh, we also went to a girls' high school where um, they had nowhere to go during recess or nothing to do. We had a whole playground set up, just a few, uh, like a slide, uh, not a slide, but monkey bars, uh, swings, and um, a merry-go-round installed. And you can't even see some of the equipment because the girls, there's so many all over the playground. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of you have heard of a young girl named Malala Yousafzai who was uh, shot by the Taliban and survived uh, because she stood for women's education. Um, we decided that uh, a science library in one of the schools for a girl school should be named after her. And we had that refurnished and also uh, gave them supplies so they could actually have a science class. A lot of their science classes had nothing, so they had nothing to actually look at and do hands-on work with. And this is some of the material for that. Uh, we also um, did some uh, student scholarships, and this is a young girl who um, is from a very, very, very poor family who would, uh, wanted to venture out and go to school and get a degree and do something and uh, we've 
been paying for and we still are for her education and soon she will be graduating very soon and this is a young boy from India um, a street boy who has no family as well and he is very keen on education himself he would um, work during the daytime and then help younger kids at night study for their school and study do their homework and whatnot and we were able to provide some money for him to also go to school our next domain is humanities um, after the floods in 2010 many uh, people or young men and women lost a lot uh, of their things of their belongings of their homes their whole entire homes were destroyed and a lot of these couples we were able to find and bring together from many villages around the area and have a mass wedding of 25 couples um, so they could finally be married and also have um, in our culture there's the system of dowry young women aren't able to get married without providing a certain amount of uh, supplies to go with them as they go to their new home. And uh, a lot of these women wouldn't have been able to get married without those. Uh, and those are some of the men and the women and our whole group uh, after the wedding or after the whole ceremony was performed. And then a few of their supplies, we gave them a bedding, a sewing machine, and some of their household supplies, plates, and whatnot. Uh, these are pictures of the uh, area that was affected that we were able to help from the floods of 2010. This is a house that was once a house but has totally almost washed away um, and uprooted literally from the ground um, <clears throat> just from the waters or from the rain. Uh, we had sent, uh, a, we had a tent city of about 25 tents that were set up for people who were not or who had lost their homes and had nowhere else to go so they actually had a dry place to stay and sleep and stay live for a while until they could go back to their homes and this is one a kind of small family that we were able to meet with for peace we also contribute to a nonprofit in india which is run by our vice president for india as well uh, and it's called STEP, uh, Standing Together to Enable Peace. And what they do is they have uh, something called Jashne Aman, which means a celebration of peace, where they go from India with a few students and they go over to Kashmir. And they talk about peace, they have all kinds of shows and things put together um, and work with other students from India and Kashmir to bridge that gap. And uh, we contribute to that as well. Also our foundation, our small foundation, was uh, recognized in the report on a decade for a culture of peace that is uh, brought up by the UN. And uh, we have a small, I don't know, in the white, there's a little green outline which is where our name is in that big book. <laughs> so. And thank you for, for your support and for being here tonight. Um, this is much more of a turnout than we ever thought. And we're very humbly thankful for that. And this is some of our information where you can contact us. Um, and we have a wonderful show for you planned tonight. And I hope you sit back, enjoy, and uh, thank you so much once again. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to say something. And all the wonderful things they already did in the other part of the, con the, the continent, in the other area of the continent, is exactly where we, we, what we want to do now in Latin America. And it's why we are here, and I really appreciate of each one of you to be here. I know it's a busy weekend, it's a long weekend, a lot of you had plans and you changed them, and I really appreciate that. Thank you Thank to you the so much. parents that let me take the kids and teach them to dance. They already knew that, but they taught me, actually. Thank you very, very much, and let's have some fun, okay? I just want to say one more thing. Uh, this night, honestly, 
could not have been possible without the help of our coordinator for Mexico and Central America, and that is Ms. Selena Page. Please. <laughs> One more little thing, uh, not little, it's quite big actually, before we start the show and before we have dinner, is if I could please have the lights on, and <laughs> thank you. Tonight we have someone very special here with us. Um, she is someone who has helped the Latin American community in Maine and has done wonderful things. Uh, and I just want to read this letter of appreciation to you and then I would like her to please come up. Um, her guest of honor for Fiesta Latina 2013 is Sister Patricia Porra. Um, and she's the director of Hispanic Pastoral Outreach for the Diocese of Portland, Maine. For her decades of tireless, unremitting humanitarian efforts to help the Latin American community of Maine, Sister Patricia Fora, the Fiesta Latina Guest of Honor, is hereby presented a letter of appreciation by the Board of Directors of the Nasreen and Alam Sher Foundation. Her conspicuous and gen generous contributions and time for her community is exemplary. An activist at heart, she strives to make a difference in the lives of those around her. Sister Patricia Fora travels the state working with volunteers and servicing the varied needs of Hispanic people in Portland, Lewiston, Auburn, and Cherry Field in coastal northern Maine. Hispanics in Maine, about 15,000 in number, are what Sister Patricia Fora calls a hidden population. Patricia's passion and dedication to the Hispanic population has attracted the attention of state officials and the Maine Citizens Council of the League of the United Latin American Citizens. An activist at heart who appears restless to make a difference, she keeps a low profile that reflects her quiet style. Her goal is to educate others without bringing too much attention to herself or the people she is helping. A true hero indeed. El nombre de la Junta de Directores de NASF, NASF, queremos darle las gracias y felicitar a la hermana Patricia Pora por ser invitada de honor de Fiesta Latina 2013. On behalf of the NASF Foundation Board of Directors, I would like to say thank you and award this letter to Sister Patricia Pora, please. Thank you. Thank you. I know what is to come in a country where you don't understand the language, and I know how important it is to have somebody like her. When you get picture, yeah. It's very nice to have somebody to help you when you don't have anybody to turn and speak your language, and you are doing the difference for us. Thank you. Thank you for this honor, and I thank the SHARE Foundation for everything that they're doing. And like the SHARE Foundation, I couldn't do what I'm doing without the support of people behind me. And I have a lot of support, and I appreciate that. Especially from the Latino community here in the state of Maine. Um, they're a wonderful community, and I don't know what else I can say. La comunidad latina aquí en el estado de Maine es una comunidad maravillosa que me da el ánimo para seguir. They help me to go ahead um, by their courage uh, with everything that they're confronting. I think it's, it's tremendous. And um, I thank this community. I thank, I just thank everybody that's behind it. We can't do it alone. And we thank you very much. Thank you.